Alright, this is section 2 of chapter 2, so we're going to start talking about velocity and momentum. Alright, so in the speed examples, I put the word velocity in there, and so now we're going to talk about what velocity truly is. And velocity has a definition that is very close to the word speed. And so, in fact, if you notice when we look at velocity, you'll notice that the definition of velocity includes the speed of an object. So it does include speed. So remember that we already talked about in the last section that speed is distance divided by time. So velocity is distance divided by time. But it's one more thing as well. And that's the direction of an object too. So is it going north? Is it going south? Is it going east? Is it going west? Is it going northwest? Those kinds of things. And so because velocity depends on direction as well as speed, the velocity can change even if the speed is not changing. So meaning that even though we're traveling down a road and maybe we're going, you know, 50 meters per second, and if we constantly go in that speed and we don't change, if we were to all of a sudden change our path and instead of just keep going straight, we decide to turn and go a different way, our speed, even if we were still going 50 meters per second the entire time, our speed would not change, but our velocity would be changing because we change direction. Here's another example of that. So let's say we have a circular track, or maybe uh, you guys could have a real life, life example of this if you go downtown, or even like you go outside to like the football field and you run track. If you decide to go a constant speed around that track, so like right here they have a set of cars that are running around this track, and they're running, they're running, they're running, they're going around this track. If they were going a constant speed the whole time around this track, their speed would be constant, but their velocity would not be, because look at these arrows. At one point they're going in this direction, one point they're going in this direction, one point they're going in this direction. So notice the direction in which they're pointing is always changing. So that means that their velocity would always be changing. So speed would be constant, but velocity would be changing. Now. There's something else we're going to talk about today, and that's the definition of momentum. Momentum is the product of taking that velocity that we just talked about. So distance divided by time plus the direction. And taking the product of that, which product hopefully we all know means multiply. Multiply it by its mass. So how much momentum it has, how much it's going to go, depends on its velocity, how much, how basically how fast it's going, and how much mass it's has. I like to think of it this way. How much momentum do you have in the morning? Well, it's going to take more momentum to get someone who is larger out of bed than someone who is smaller. Or maybe for some of you football players. Is it going to take more momentum to get the big guy to move or the small guy to move? Obviously, it's going to take more momentum to get the big guy to move. More mass means more momentum. It's related to how much force is needed to change its motion. Now, we have an equation for that. You'll start to notice here in physics we have lots of equations. Momentum is the mass times its velocity. Masses are going to be in kilograms, velocities in meters per second. So our equation is P equals M times V. Now we use P for momentum because M was taken by everything else. We already used all the M's, so they use P for momentum. So P equals M times V. Now things to think about. Velocity has a direction. 
So since velocity has a direction, momentum will have a direction. So just kind of think about that. Let's do some examples here. Alright, so our equation is P equals MV. So we have P, we have M, we have V. So P, remember, stands for momentum. I just totally butchered that on spelling. You guys will learn to love me as far as spelling goes. There we go. Momentum. All right. Momentum. Now, and I didn't point this out in the last slide, momentum has really weird units. It's a combination of the two that we have here. Mass is in kilograms. Velocity is in meters per second, just like speed. So your units for momentum are just a combination of that. Kilograms times meters per second. So that's what you're looking for for momentum. All right, M is mass. It's in kilograms. V is velocity, and it is in um, meters per second. So those are the things you're looking for. Also, velocity, if it has one, you're looking for a direction too. So you would like to have the direction so that you could have a direction with momentum too, if it has one. Sometimes it won't. Um, you know, again, that's not something I'm super, super picky on, but... I would like to have it if it has one. All right, so let's go up here. A 1,500-kilogram car is traveling west at 100 meters per second. What's the car's momentum? All right, so 1,500-kilogram car. So kilograms. That means that we're talking about the mass here. Oh, we change colors. So we can kind of separate this out here a little bit. How about we switch over to maybe like a green? All right, so let's see, 1,500 kilograms, so that's what it gave us. All right, and then let's see, 100 meters per second is the other number. Meters per second, 100 meters per second. Now, the other thing I want to point out here is, look, look right here, west. They gave us a direction here, so guess what, west. So guess what we already know up here? West. So that means we have a direction, but we don't have an answer as far as like what the number is. So we're gonna have to set this up. So let's see, P equals M, which is 1500 times 100. So that means that P is gonna be equal to 15 with well, zero, 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 zero. Put a comma there, kilograms times meters per second west. And this is what it's talking about, that if they give you a direction, you should put a direction. So this is a straight multiplication problem, because look, they gave you m, v, it's straight m times v. And if you're solving for anything else, it's going to be division. So the only time you multiply is if they give you m and v. All right, let's try another one. I'll switch back to the red because I think it's a little easier to see, maybe. All right, so we said our equation already. Write that up here. I always like to write the equation down, and I always like to write this over here so we know what we have. A marble is rolling at a velocity of 1.5 meters per second with its momentum of 0 0.10 kilogram meters per second. What is its mass? All right, so let's see. They gave us 1.5 meters per second. So that's a velocity. And then over here, 0 0.10 kilogram meters per second. That's a momentum. So that means we have everything but this M here. So that means we're going to be solving for mass. So let's plug in a P. I 
don't have M. And I'm going to solve. I like to use parentheses. It's up to you. Um, so I'm going to put my 1.5 in parentheses just to kind of show that it's M times 1.5. So now I have this, so basically all I'm going to do is divide each side by 1.5 to get m by itself. Just going to darken those decimals a little bit. Alright, so now I'm just going to take handy dandy calculator, 0 0.1 divided by 1.5. And let's see, so I get 0 0.0, maybe like 7, it's probably good. It comes out like 0 0.066666. I don't know why we're getting all these weird sixes, but just the way it works. And that's M. And so M is in kilograms. And that kind of makes sense that you're getting really small numbers in kilograms, because in here we deal a lot with grams. So you, usually, you know, you're getting, you know, that's going to be about 70 grams, and that makes a little bit more sense than, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot of kilograms. All right. So just some other information, momentum, a little bit more. When two objects have the same velocity, the object with the larger mass has the larger momentum. Kind of makes sense. Gave you two objects here to kind of show you. A 30,000 kilogram truck traveling at 30 mile east has a momentum of 900,000 kilograms. And you have this little smart car here that, you know, is 1,500 kilograms traveling at the same speed, still traveling at 30 meters per second east has a momentum of 4,500 kilograms. So notice, heavy semi-truck, lots more momentum. When it's traveling at the same speed, this guy's going to have more momentum. Okay, And that's why when a semi-truck hits a little car, it's going to do more damage because it has a lot more momentum. If two objects have the same mass, the one that has a larger ve velocity has more momentum. So I give you an example here. We have two sports cars that are obviously the exact same sports car, so they would have the exact same mass. But let's say this car over here was traveling faster, which I guess I should have put it farther up because if it's traveling faster, it wouldn't be behind. Maybe it lapped it already. But anyway. Um, so it has more momentum, so it would have more velocity because it has more speed. 